Welcome, folks, to another Pine Econ interview. We've just closed our CFP and we've just emailed our first mentors, so we're in the next phase of the project. But that doesn't mean we still can't get to know the organizers. And there's a couple more that you haven't met yet. So today I have Austin, and I'm going to let him introduce himself. So Austin, if you don't mind giving everybody a short introduction about yourself. Hi, Robin. Thanks. I'm really excited to be here and to be working on PyMCon to bring that to the world in 2023. I am kind of a mathematician by training. I got into the world of data science after grad school. PyMC was a huge part of that. I kind of found the Bayesian framework really appealing from a mathematical perspective. I was looking for, uh, you know, an easy way to take the math that I had in my head and get it to run on a computer and, and uh, use inference. I found out that PyMC was kind of the shortest path for me between Greek letters on a piece of paper and models that could perform inference on a computer, which was really exciting. I think I got started contributing around 2015. We, we'll get into that more in a little bit and have been a, a happy user and sometime contributor ever since. In my day job, I'm the chief technology officer at a company called Monetate where we provide personalization solutions to online retailers, product recommendations, A-B testing, some nice Bayesian statistics mixed in there. So between all of that and even over these number of years, what has kept you interested in PyMCCon? PyMCon, uh, you and I messed this up. <laughs> yeah, PyMCon. Uh, <laughs> you know, one of my things that I have benefited the most of in my involvement with PyMC is building documentation and sharing examples of PyMC in the wild used to solve real life problems, whether that's marketing problems, whether it's the problem of determining whether Lego prices are fair or not. A lot of my love for PyMC comes through applied work of what you can do with it. My largest contributions have been to the examples and some ancillary repositories really showing what you can get out of PyMC. So I am just really excited to be a part of bringing more people's experience with PyMC to the world. I'm really excited about the first slate of talks we have for PyMCon, because I think, you know, if you look for recorded material about PyMC online, you probably get the same half dozen people or so historically talking about it. You get your Thomas Vickies, you get your Chris Fonsbeck, you'll see me mixed in there and a couple others. I'm really excited to bring some new voices in there to share the exciting work they've been doing with PyMC over the last few years. I'm glad you're helping others. For those who don't know, this will be the question that I'll ask Austin next. But a lot of his notebooks were the way I got involved in PyMC. He had written a very nice survival analysis notebook that I had used quite heavily. And uh, recently, just as you alluded to, he wrote a really cool notebook on analyzing Lego prices and knowing whether uh, the Lego set you're going to buy next has a fair price or not. A uh, very good example of decision analysis with real world data sets. So it's actually really, really great stuff. I appreciate the kind words. <laughs> <laughs> I want to ask you a bonus question, a two part sure. question. You explained a little bit of how you got started with PyMC, and so I'll ask you to elaborate on that a little bit. And then also, as somebody who's a leader in this space and has been working with PPLs for a while, how have you seen the computational Bayesian ecosystem change over the years you've been involved with probabilistic programming languages? Yeah, I think that is a great question. Uh, so the first one, how did I start contributing PyMC? I think my very first contribution was maybe, and this was year, you could tell how long ago this was because it predates RVs, because I think it was updating the ability to change a label in one of the posterior plots. It might have been a forest plot or something like that way back. So it was a, more of a, a matplotlib pull request than anything else just to the PyMC code base. After that one got merged, I got talking to Thomas Vicky a little bit, and he got on my website, saw some of the examples I had written there using PyMC, and asked me to start contributing those to the documentation. So I got started porting a couple blog posts that I had done, this is probably again 2015, 2016, into the PyMC examples repository, which has really blossomed in the years since. And from there, you know, it started to be, hey, I had a new kind of model I wanted to implement in mind. A good example, I'd say, is a marginalized mixture model, right, where you're not sampling the indicator variable that says this sample was drawn from this cell, but you're actually just marginalizing that for more efficient sampling. I'd hack some code together to do it in a notebook, and then someone would say, hey, why don't you actually just try to get that in the code base as part of your example as well? So my contributions kind of went from plots to docs and to more 
substantive contribution is driven by problems I wanted to solve that required specialized niche things where the distributions or whatever just weren't there. Mixture models in particular, dear slate processes also a little bit. I did a little of work around that, then mentored some Google Summer of Code projects around that as well. Google Summer of Code is another excellent example, trying to give back any way I can to this project. And then in terms of how I've seen the space of probabilistic programming languages evolve over the years, because yeah, it's been seven or eight years that I've been doing this, contributing it, and probably 10 that I've been using them. I think I would say we've seen a real maturation of the ecosystem in that, you know, we've seen folks start to draw a line between like what is shared functionality or problems that are fundamental to the issue of computational Bayesian inference versus what's extremely library specific, right? So at the beginning, there were a lot of things that were maybe idiosyncratic to Stan or to PyMC or to other libraries. And it was hard to tell, hey, is that just a feature of the math? And this is how it plays out in that program, PPL? Or is that an idiosyncrasy of that of a Sarah or Stan's homegrown tensor calculation and auto diff library, whatever it is. I think we've seen a real maturation there over the year. You can see that in terms of shared tools like RVs, right? We're starting to coalesce around a standard for what does it mean to do posterior checking and visual inference on the results of Bayesian computation, kind of coalesce around a standard that is a little bit independent or at least modular across many probabilistic programming languages and libraries. And I think the same is true around diagnostics, you know, different step types, et cetera, et cetera. So I think you're seeing a lot of just maturation in terms of understanding what's a fundamental issue. And then I'd say it as what's under control of the probabilistic programming package and what's not, what's a fundamental force of the math. And the real advantage of that is things that are fundamental to the math of computational Bayesian inference, everyone in this community can share advances on that, right? I think there's a great amount of cross-pollination, for example, between the STAN team and the PyMC team in terms of theory. Uh, some that comes out in RV, some that plays out in the STAN and PyMC repositories themselves. So that's something that's really exciting to me in a development we've seen over the years. Thank you for sharing that long perspective you've had since you've been doing this for so long. The yep. last question I have, is there anything else you would like to leave the PyMC and PyMC gone community? I would just say, if this is something that's interesting to you, being a part of PyMC has been a real highlight of the last, you know, seven or eight years for me. So I would just ask people, find something you think that the team could do better or the software could do better and uh, open a pull request or get the attention of someone who you think might be able to show you a, a place that you could contribute or how to change it and roll up your sleeves and get working if you can, because it's been hugely rewarding for me. Robin and I were talking before we started recording. I don't get to write as much code now, but it's still rewarding to give back through mentorship. So I would just like to ask more people to get into that pipeline, because the more views we get in there, the better the software will be. I clearly second that. PyMC has a very great community, one of the best teams I've worked with as an open source team, and even as a general team at any company that I've worked at. So certainly, like Austin said, get involved with the repository if you'd like. And in terms of PyMCCon specifically, as I just noticed, our first round of CFPs has concluded. We have a rolling CFP, so if you have any ideas to contribute a talk or a tutorial or anything like that, feel free to still submit. It's on our website. But excitingly, our first series of events will kick off around early February. Austin is one of the mentors, uh, mentoring one of the talks, or one of the events, I should say. So look forward to that as well. Mark your calendars for early Feb and get on the PyMC discourse and the GitHub and you'll certainly uh, get notified when you see that happen. So with that, thank you so much, Austin, for being a mentor and as part of the PyMCCon team and making PyMC available for folks like myself who joined in uh, after you and passing it along. Certainly appreciate your time. Thank you for all the hard work organizing here and, and herding the cats to make events <laughs> like this possible. <laughs>